Welcome to the Apparitions and Archaeology Tour. This central area of campus has a long and storied history. We start our tour at the location of the first building on campus, College Hall. It was erected in 1856 and was the first structure in America that was dedicated to the instruction of scientific agriculture. College Hall was plagued with problems from the start, but it was not until the early 1900s when the college began to transform the building into a student union that the extent of poor construction became clear. On August 12, 1918, a portion of College Hall came crashing down as the band played the national anthem at a war trainee's retreat. In October of 1918, the college decided to build an artillery garage on the foundations of College Hall. An alum was upset that such a structure stood where the original college building was located, and in 1928 paid for a memorial structure, which we now know as Beaumont Tower. The tower itself was constructed where the northeast corner of College Hall once stood. Some of the foundation walls for the original building still exist underneath the sidewalks. In the fall of 2009, the Campus Archaeology Program tested areas north and south of Beaumont Tower. Once old sidewalks were removed, the Campus Archaeology Program discovered the foundation of College Hall. In addition to the College Hall Foundation, cinder pathways used by students in the earliest days of MSU were revealed in the test excavation units. In 1927, East Lansing determined that a proper sewer system was needed, and the brook was diverted into a concrete pipe system. In the winter, when it snows, it is still possible to identify the underground brook as the warmth of the water melts the snow immediately above it. Archaeological work has revealed a number of important sites on MSU's historic campus. This is the location of an indigenous North American site that Cap dated to be around 5,000 to 3,500 years old. We found evidence of a substantial fire pit, as well as some distinctive tools used during this period. This is also an area we have found refuse or trash from the earliest campus occupation in the 19th century. A number of odd artifacts have been found, including the heels of someone's shoes and a cluster of human hair that appears to have been thrown out. Finally, when campus first began, it made its own bricks. This is the area where clay was gathered for the bricks to construct the first campus buildings. It is not entirely clear where the bricks were actually made. Saints Rest was the first dormitory on campus. Constructed in 1857, it allowed students to live close to both their classes and their fellow classmates. The building was constructed to house 56 students, but with increasing enrollment over the years, eventually over 80 young men were crammed into its rooms. The lack of funds meant that the structural upkeep lagged behind, leaving the building in poor condition as years went on. In the winter of 1876, while students were on break, the building burned down. The foundation was filled in with debris and its location marked only by a small stone plaque. In the summer of 2005, the Saints Rest Dormitory underwent extensive excavation as part of a field school conducted by the MSU Department of Anthropology. The extensive excavations uncovered several building walls and a myriad of artifacts, including hardware such as stoves, hinges, and doorknobs. During the excavation, archaeologists determined that the fire likely started in the basement, where construction tools were found burned in place suggesting that an unattended lamp or heater may have been to blame for the blaze. Perhaps most importantly, this project prompted the establishment and creation of the Campus Archaeology Program. In 2015, a privy associated with the Saints Rest Dormitory was discovered and excavated by the MSU Campus Archaeology Program. Not only was this the bathroom for the students, but it also served as a dumping ground for illicit items, such as smoking pipes and alcohol bottles, that students wished to hide forever. But also discovered in this historic privy was the head of a porcelain doll who came to be known as Mabel. Why someone living in Saints Rest, an all-male dormitory, was seeking to get rid of a doll remains a mystery. Linton Hall is the oldest standing academic building on campus. It was erected in 1881 to serve as the college library and museum and was used as the administration building in its later years. Lack of funds contributed to the library's beginnings on the third floor of College Hall. After a brief residence on the first floor of that building, the collection of over 1,200 volumes and newspapers was moved to the new Linton Hall. 
The second floor of Linton Hall was also home to the General Museum, which held the college's natural history collections. In 1925, the museum collections moved to the current MSU Museum building. Both the collections and the library stayed in the museum building until 1955 when the current library was built. After the departure of the collections, Linton Hall was transformed into the administration building and then various administrative and departmental offices. The 1900 fountain is an often overlooked artifact of the past, hidden between the bushes and trees of this area. It is a unique feature, not only due to its age and that it has two sides, one for humans and one for horses, but that it marks where the old road used to go through campus. Before cars and campus expansion, the road for this central area actually ran between the buildings, not along the outer sides as they do today. As travelers made their way through campus, they would stop here for a quick refreshment. It was placed between Linton Hall and Williams Hall, now located under the current MSU Museum. The building wasn't symmetrical. The original plan was to make both sides exactly the same, but because of a lack of resources, the north wing was never built. Building materials included mostly red sandstone, and the dorm stood in front of an artificial pond. In the late 1930s, the women moved out of the women's building and into a new women's dormitory, Williams Hall, and the name of the women's building was changed to Morrow Hall. It wasn't until 1896 when an official women's course was added into the curriculum. This caused the number of women attending the school to greatly increase, and it was clear that a building was needed for female housing. Construction on the women's building began in 1899 and was completed in 1900. The building was designed to sleep 120 women and a handful of faculty, including the dean, the head of the home economics department, her assistants, and the physical education instructor. Other rooms included a kitchen lab, dining rooms, a large recreation room, parlors, music rooms, bathrooms, and even a two-story gym. Since then, the building has been used for a number of different department offices and classrooms, most recently that of English, History, and Religious Studies. In 2010, the Board of Trustees decided that the internal wooden structure of Morrow Hall had incurred irreparable deterioration and was at the end of its useful life. The decision was made to demolish the building and in its place create a commemorative green space. Archaeological survey of this area was done prior to reconstruction, but no artifacts were recovered. All that is left is some of the original stone, which was used to construct benches, and the original layout of the building, which has been marked with the concrete sidewalks below us. This area was once known as Faculty Row. This was where the first faculty homes were built on campus. Building began in 1857, two years after the college was founded. Cowell's house was one of the first four houses built. By 1885, there were 11 houses in total. Each building housed professors and their families. Some of the most famous residents of Faculty Row include President Abbott, Dr. Beale, and Dr. Kedsey. The houses were built to look like 19th century farmhouses with big front porches, backyards, and even small horse barns. By 1970, all of these buildings had been repurposed, moved, or demolished. The only Faculty Row building still here today is Cal's House, which is the oldest standing structure on MSU's campus. Today, it serves as a special event center and meeting place for the president. This area is now known as North Neighborhood and is home to numerous undergraduate students. Construction on the dormitories began in the 1940s. Each dorm is named after a prominent woman from MSU's history, including Louise Campbell, Maud Gilchrist, Linda Landon, Mary Mayo, Sarah Williams, and Alita Yakely. In 2008, campus archaeology excavated Faculty Row in the area between Landon and Campbell Halls. During these excavations, the campus archaeology program found early construction materials, including wood plumbing pipes and bricks made of clay sourced from the Red Cedar River and fired on campus. This shows that members of Max population relied on local materials to construct the earliest buildings. In 1879, Beale got the college to build a botanical laboratory in the area near the Botanical Garden. The laboratory held state-of-the-art equipment, including compound microscopes. The first floor of the building was a laboratory lecture room, and the second floor was a museum with a large collection of plant specimens. This building burned down in 1890. Legend has it that some incompetent graduate students accidentally started a fire in the attic. Beale holds the world record for the longest continually monitored scientific study. 
1879, he buried 20 bottles of seeds mixed with sand at a secret location on campus. The goal of the experiment was to dig up one bottle every few years and test how many seeds sprouted. The next bottle is due to be excavated in 2020 and the last in 2100. Campus archaeology excavated between West Circle Drive and the Beale Garden Gazebo in 2016. Cat found building foundations believed to be the botanical laboratory. Artifacts recovered include building materials, melted glass, and charcoal, probably associated with the 1890 fire. Beale Botanical Garden is the longest continually maintained university garden in the nation. It was established in 1873 by William Beale, MAC's first professor of botany. When he arrived at MAC, Beale turned much of this area of campus into a wild garden that he used as an outdoor laboratory. The garden contained over 700 species of flowering plants. The planting, labeling, and maintenance of the garden was done almost entirely by Beale's students. When Beale died in 1924, the Michigan State Board of Agriculture renamed the garden after him. Welcome to the MSU Museum. Long ago, a very different building stood in this spot. Williams Hall, which was the second dormitory on campus. It was built in 1869, but like nearby Saints Rest, it burned down in 1919 during winter break. Museum collections were originally housed in Linton Hall, just to the northeast of here. The current museum building was finished in 1925. Until 1994, the basement of the museum housed some of the archaeology offices and labs. Although limited archaeology has been done in the immediate vicinity of the museum, just to the west of Beaumont Tower, a small archaic campsite dating to between 3000 and 500 BC was discovered and excavated by campus archaeology in 2010 and 2011. It is the only intact pre-Columbian Native American site known on campus and continues a long tradition of research focusing on ancient Michigan sites by MSU archaeologists.